Hey guys, welcome back to the next part of the series. Today we're gonna finish the robot arm and we're gonna do it with something very special called an animation test. So let's get to it. This is where we left off. Our full controllers are working and everything is, is looking very nice. And the animation test is something that I recommend for all of you riggers out there that want to present your portfolio in a better way. Whenever you present your portfolio as a rigger, the thing that people are looking for is making sure that the rig works as intended, right? However, it's very difficult to just like send the rig to someone, make him open it, make sure everything's connected and then try it out. It's better if we can do a little bit of an animation test. And you've probably seen this before in the Disney and DreamWorks like making off movies. Um, you're gonna see that they do like some weird movements like jumps, raising the arms, lowering the arms, like bending the character one way or another. Those are the animation tests that you wanna see to make sure everything is, is working as intended. So we're gonna do something very simple here. Uh, the first thing I wanna do, and this is something that we can actually include with the rig scene file, we can grab all of the controllers one by one, or you can also go select all by type um, uh, nerves curves, and that's gonna select all of the curves. And we're gonna create something called a quick select set. So I'm gonna go into create set, and I'm gonna say a quick select set. And I'm gonna call this a robot arm. That way, anytime we need to select all of the controllers, they're gonna be just right here. So it's very easy to just select them here. It, it's a, it's an independent part of the thing. Like the actual uh, curves are, are over here. This is just like a reference. And one of the cool things about this is if you've seen our animation course, you can actually go into select, quick select sets, and you can press control shift click to create a little uh, button here that will automatically select everything so that we can keyframe them a little bit easier. So I'm gonna go here into show and I'm gonna hide the joints. I don't wanna see the joints, I just wanna see uh, the, the character here. And this is a robot, so we're gonna do a fairly long test. So I'm gonna say like 600 frames. And what I wanna do is I wanna see the full range of motion for the, for the thing. So we're gonna start simple, meaning I'm just gonna select all of the curves and in frame one, I'm gonna press uh, S. And then in frame 100, I am gonna um, start moving him. So let's say, let's move him to the right and then all the way to the right like this and then let's like bend him over a little bit and move this thing like this and let's keep this thing like stabilized or let's go like this so now if we check the animation we have this and then we can have the opposite so i'm gonna go from frame i'm gonna go back to the origin in another 100 frames so by frame 200 i'm gonna go back to uh so it's gonna be like one and then oh here, very important to select all the curves before we do this. So let's do this, select all the curves, and then from frame one, let's go to frame 200, hit S, so it's gonna go, it's gonna be like, okay, we go there. I'm gonna hold the pose for just a couple of frames, so like 10 frames. So I'm gonna select this frame right here and then middle mouse button click on the next frame right here. That way this guy like holds the pose for a little bit and then it just comes back. And then I'm gonna make it go to the other side so let's rotate to the other side. Let's rotate. In this case, we're gonna go up. Or rather, I, I think that, that one's fine. I'm just gonna leave that one there. We're gonna go up here. We're gonna go up here. And I wanna I wanna rotate the whole little head here. So first I'm gonna I'm gonna just go S there. And then in like another let's say 80 frames or something, I'm just gonna grab this guy. And let's rotate it so that it shows that you can rotate the little head. Let's do 360 degrees so that it goes back to the origin. And then after that, I want to do a little bit of like uh, opening and closing of the fingers very fast. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to grab the three fingers. Let's open it up. And then very fast, we're going to close them. And then again, very fast, we're going to open, we're gonna close, and then over here, I'm gonna return this to its original position, to zero. So while this thing is doing it, it will do like back, back. You can see that, like th those little tick, tick, and then it goes back, and then by frame, let's say 540, we're just gonna select all of the curves, and we can zero them out, zero them out one by one on all the axis and uh, we should be going back to the to the beginning. So 600 frames are, um, if you make the quick calculation, I'm, I'm really bad at math, so that's 25 seconds, which is fine. 25 seconds is fine. Now, later on in, in After Effects, for instance, we can just compress the video if it's a little too long, but I think this is gonna be fine. So we have this, the crane moves over there, 
I think it's a little bit slow. So I'll show you one way to in which we can uh, make it a little bit faster here. So yeah, it's a little bit slow. But you can see the whole animation, right? Like we see the whole range of motion that we have available with a little guy here. And uh, that's more than enough um, for animators and for anyone seeing our rig to appreciate how much uh, range of movement we're going to have. So how can we make this a little bit faster? Very easy. I'm just going to press shift, click and drag all around the character here. And I'm just going to compress this all the way with the outer uh, arrows here. Let's compress it to like 300 frames. Let's see how this looks. There we go. That's a little bit better. We have this very robotic like motion. The little guy going like everywhere and, and doing its little uh, action. There we go. And we go back to the beginning. So as you can see, it makes it look very, very nice. And, and one of the cool things about this is we can, of course, render this. We can create a little uh, render for, for this character. And that's going to uh, make it look a lot better. So I already have the lights right here. So I'm just going to go here. I'm going to create a plane. I'm going to assign. Uh, it has the, the Lambert. The color that we're seeing there is just the HDR. Uh, let me find one good shot because this motion right here is very important for me to, to appreciate. So I think I think this is a good shot right here because we see the side of the of the crane. It goes there, it goes there, it goes up, it twists, and then it goes back down. So that's that's perfect. And we know that we're only going to need 300 frames. So we say 300 frames. Uh, I am going to create a camera. I usually like whenever I do this, I like creating a camera. That's going to be my my uh, uh, shot cam. It's, it's going to be the camera that we're going to be using to, of course, a shot through. We're going to say look through selected here, panels, look through selected to jump onto the camera. And now we need to frame our uh, composition. So something like this. Make sure that at any point throughout the animation, you see the whole thing. Very important. Something like this, I think works fine. There we go. That looks good. Now this plane, I'm going to try to align it to the camera. I'm going to grab the back part here back edge, just move it up, move it up, and move it up. If you haven't seen, I, I did a video for the YouTube channel, you should check it out, uh, which is called uh, uh, how to do a like professional render. I think it was called something like that. There we go. And uh, now I am going to delete this ambient light that was just to fill in the light a little bit. Let me save this real quick. I'm going to go to my options here. And in the system, since I have a NVIDIA GPU, I can use GPU. If you don't have it, you are going to have to use CPU, which is just a slightly slower. I'm going to go Arnold and render. And let's see how this looks. There we go. So not bad, but also not perfect. As you can see, it's a little bit uh, dark. So I'm going to go to my AI Skydome light. Or rather than that, I'm actually just going to add a new light. So I am going to say Arnold light, area light. And let's just add uh, like a big area light coming from the top here. Exposure, you usually are going to be using a high exposure, something like that. I have, uh, th that's one of the cool things. The the lights inside of Arnold actually work really well in the viewport, viewport 2.0. So you can see a very nice preview. It's not going to be perfect, as you see. It's, it's not exact, uh, but it's going to get you there. So I'm going to say 12, uh, probably like 11.5. There we go. That's a little bit better. One thing I can do is I can reduce the spread. That way we're only seeing the uh, or we're, we're giving more like importance to the to the to the uh, crane right here. That looks very nice. And uh, now it's just a matter of uh, upping up the samples so that we don't have a, uh, such a grainy image. So I'm going to go up here to the um, Arnold Renderer Adaptive Sampling. I'm just going to enable. I'm going to say Max Camera 20 Adaptive Threshold 0.015. That's like, those are not super high numbers, but they're rather high. So as you can see, it's going to take quite a little bit of, of time. Uh, another thing that's really going to help, of course, is the size of your image. So if we have a bigger image, the grain is going to be smaller and therefore uh, not as uh, intrusive. So let's, do the, let's just do this. There we go. Now, one thing I've always told my students, and hopefully you already know, you've seen other of the courses, the lights, if you have a very big light, you're going to have very soft shadows. If you want ha harder shadows, the light has to be smaller. Oop. That's just something that most renderers nowadays do to try and, and make it a little bit more artist friendly. So as you, can, as you can see there, the exposure is not really like changing that much. But if we have like a really, really small light, you're going to see a very hard shadow there which might look a little bit nicer. So I'm just going to make it slightly uh, bigger, something like this. 
and there we go. So of course, render will take a while. So I'm just going to show you very quickly how you're going to be rendering this sequence so that you can uh, import it into your uh, portfolio or whatever you want to you want to show. And it's, it's actually very, very simple. What you're going to do is you're going to go into your options here, change the uh, type of file that you want. In this case, I'm going to export in JPEG because I'm not going to do any any sort of color correction or anything. Uh, it's just going to be as is. And I'm going to change here the frame and animation extension. I'm going to change this to name number and extension. That way I'm going to get Robert Arm underscore rig dot zero zero one dot JPEG on your project that you set up previously. You want to render from frame one to a frame 300. That's what we're going to be doing. And now if we jump into the Maya render view, this one right here, the little uh, icon with the eye, you're going to say render, render sequence, option box, make sure shotgun is selected, make sure the frame is correct, and then you just hit render sequence and close. Now, if you want to optimize this as much as possible, the one thing that you definitely want to do is I will definitely like hit play here and just wait and see how long it's actually taking to, to clean up the image uh, until a point where I feel like it, it looks okay, it looks uh, clean enough. So it probably will take a, about a minute. So if you think about it, a minute for 300 frames is going to be 300 minutes. So that means that it's going to be five hours, right? It's five hours of render time um, that you're going to have to wait. Uh, of course, I'm not going to do that right now. But uh, later on, uh, probably overnight, I usually leave it overnight, uh, I would render. Now, see here, like at, at this point, I think the noise is fine. So I'm just going to stop it right there. And that was 12%. So that means that I probably can lower this to like eight samples per camera and something like a 0 0.05. And yeah, it's going to be a little bit noisy, but it's going to be fast. And since this is just a, a demonstration uh, or for demonstration purposes, I think that's going to be fine. So you can see how the percentage here is moving a little bit faster. And as soon as it hits 100%, which I'm assuming it will take about a minute or maybe even less, we should have a, a fairly clean image. Um, that's going to look uh, nice. If it's way, way too noisy, then you might uh, you might want to increase the uh, the cameras, uh, camera samples here. But as you can see, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with this, especially at, at full HD. Like you're never going to see it at this distance. This, as you can see, is 399% uh, of, of zoom. If you go to 100% of zoom, the one one, this is what you're going to see on screen. Like this is what you're going to see. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, this is probably what you saw even in the in the intro video. So there is going to be a little bit of noise. But the movement and the and the and the things that we're looking for are gonna look just nice. So it only took, mm -hmm. <coughs> oh my god, uh, thirty three seconds. So it's gonna be half that time uh, of what I was expecting. So that's perfect. Now, if you wanna do the render yourself, this scene is gonna be, <coughs> oh my god, it's allergy season over here, and I'm totally losing it. <laughs> Sorry. I apologize for that. But again, if you want to use this render scene and try it out for yourself, feel free to do that. I'm probably going to be using this same render scene for all of the other uh, rigs that we're going to be doing. So one way in which you can save the scene without saving the, the rig is the following. <laughs> I apologize. I'm sorry about that, guys. This is probably the first time that I've gotten this sneeze attack during one of my recordings. And since all of the information is really good, I really don't want to uh, cancel it. So I'm just going to show you here real quick, or actually, <laughs> sorry, let's leave it right here. I'm going to, I'm going to go and take my medicine. I'm going to make sure that the sneezes are off for the next couple of videos. And uh, I'll show you how to clean this render later on, how to reutilize this render scene for some of our other rigs. So that's it for tonight or for today, for this video. I'll see you back in the next one. Bye-bye.